In the next 10 minutes, I'm not gonna show you how to use Gemini 3 to create website and app designs that look good. I'm gonna show you how to use it to create designs that could win international design award competitions. And I'm not talking about letting Gemini 3 have all the fun either. I'm talking about keeping you in the driver's seat so you can create designs to your exact specifications, even if you currently don't speak design lingo. We're gonna look at everything from stunningly professional designs to the most whacked out, insane creative edges I could push Gemini 3 to. I ran a marketing agency for 10 years serving software companies exclusively and I know firsthand how hard and how important it is to get the design right and I think by the end of this video you'll agree that the only bottleneck is your creativity and I've got a prompt to help you with that here as well. You can use this for all kinds of things from launching your own startup to your different passion projects and hobbies to even how you deliver research reports for your work with little micro sites that have killer designs. And of course you can make some significant revenue immediately immediately by doing these designs for other people. I'm gonna walk through some pricing ideas for that as well. I spent many hours banging my head against Gemini 3 coming up with this process before everything just clicked into place. So let's get into it. Here's the roadmap we're gonna to follow today. I wanna to show you my first designs and how my initial research revealed a major trap that I don't want you to fall into. Then a quick iteration prompt that dramatically improved my results. From there I found a website that was the biggest breakthrough of this entire process and combining that with that previous prompt is the game changer. Here. Next, I want to share a little design lingo that you can use in your prompts to steer Gemini to build truly world class designs. And finally, once you have something you love, I want to show you how you can publish that into a real website or app. I found that to create the best designs using Gemini 3, you need to do this inside of Google's AI Studio. So you can just search that, or it's just aistudio.google.com. When you log in, you're going to see something like this. And what you might be tempted to do is just say, hey, you know, build me a nice professional a website design and when you do that you'll get something that looks like this and it's not bad but trust me we can get a lot better from here for that I'm jumping into the cheat sheet I make a cheat sheet like this for every single video I create there are now over hundred and sixty of these instantly available to anybody who supports this channel on patreon there is a link in the description to that this one is well over 20 pages long with tons of stuff here and the one thing here, this prompt really helped when I told the AI, you are competing against other frontier AI models. So I propose this as a uh, competition. And this prompt is rather long. So if you want access to that, you can grab the cheat sheet or you can just experiment with this first part, grabbing that and then just describing what the design is for right here. Copy and pasting that right here into Google AI Studio, clicking build. And you can see immediately we've got a much better looking design here. This wasn't bad, but just for giggles, I threw this same prompt into Claude and to see what it came up with. And it was strikingly similar. So this is the trap that I don't want you to fall into thinking you've got a great design and giving it to a client or putting it out there into the world to realize it looks just like every other AI generated uh, piece. So the next step here is we want to iterate on these. The same way that uh, when I would work with designers, I would say, hey, don't create one design, create three different designs and let me mix and match between those three. So that's the follow-up prompt we're gonna use here, just saying, hey, this is a solid design, but give me a couple more versions that are all three as different from one another as possible while still adhering to the brief. Dropping that right in here. And now it's created these three different designs that are all very different from one another. And we're really getting somewhere here with these different looks and feels, but still through all of my experimentation, I found that these similar patterns show up over and over again. So I started to think to myself, how do we get around this and really get the AI to do what we want it to? One idea is to tell it to design something like Apple or something like Nike to you know, use these iconic brands as reference and that improved the designs a little bit. But it wasn't until I found this site, this is awwardsawards.com that features tons of award-winning designs that things really started to cook. You can search here for whatever type of of um, thing that you are looking to create and it will give you a bunch of really stunning design ideas. And for these, when you find a design that you like, you can then go and visit the site itself 
and see some really cool cutting edge designs here. And I was taking screen grabs of these and putting these into the AI and that was working a little bit better, but let me show you what worked even better than that. I found this killer website that I really liked and I took a screen recording of it with me scrolling over and showing how things work here. I use a tool called Zite for that. I'm not sponsored by Zite or any of the tools that I talk about. And once I had this screen recording, done of this design. I downloaded that and I dropped it into a new chat window inside Google AI Studio. Google AI Studio is very good at analyzing videos. So I dropped that short video in there of showing how the thing works. Then I use this meta prompt. This is a prompt designed to create a prompt, if that makes any sense. But basically what it does is it asks Gemini to analyze that screen capture video and create a highly detailed prompt for recreating a very similar website using an LLM like Gemini. And after I dropped that in here, it created this massive prompt. Look at how long this prompt is describing exactly in deep detail what that award-winning website looks and acts like. I'm gonna include that full result in the cheat sheet as well. But for now, let's just copy and paste this back into the AI studio, this super long prompt, and click build. Awesome, and now look at what that has come up with. That is totally sweet. We can check out what it looks like on mobile. We can rotate it, and if we zoom out, we can see that it's got this uh, right-hand side here with some really cool, weird stuff happening here. So we're now a very far cry from this basic original design. But we can go way deeper into controlling how these models operate just by understanding some basic web design vocabulary. And there's a lot to this, but if you learn some of the basic terms here when it comes to fonts, and when it comes to layout, and especially when it comes to color and even animation, you can gain great control over how these models operate. Remember, you can take a screen grab of one specific element, feed that right back into Gemini and say, hey, modify this based on X, Y, Z. And if you know some of these terminologies like micro interaction, you can bring that next level of professionalism to your website. One term that I've used quite a lot is this WebGL for these different web backgrounds and interactions. By understanding just that one term WebGL, I could really command it to build these really interesting things going on behind the scenes. You can see when I scroll, those stars move. You can see there's all these different interactions that happen as I scroll over this landing page and you know start to build out designs that are much more professional than you know just one single prompt will get you. By peppering your prompts with some of this professional design vocabulary, you can really bring your designs to the next level. I've got an entire glossary in this cheat sheet that goes on for many pages with all of these different terms that might be helpful for really pushing these designs to the next level. After a little back and forth using those methods, I was able to create this design that I am super happy with, a gallery type site for a potential you know, web design agency showing off some of the work here. But that only ignited my curiosity further to see how far I could push Gemini. And that's how I came up with this maximum creativity competition prompt, telling Gemini that you're now competing against other frontier models to create the most impressive artistic website. You'll be judged on creativity and artistic expression. This is about creating something very strange and very beautiful that makes people stop and feel something. That's the core of this prompt, but then it goes on to explain the details of this imaginary film festival that the website is for. And wow, look at what it came up with. This thing is really creative super weird, pretty punk rock here. And again, I prompted it to give me three different versions. I think this one is one of my favorites with that really weird lime yellow and all of these different things here. Here's a version that turned out really cool. So that's a film festival. You can see it's counting down and you can see I use that WebGL and some of those enhancements for some of the uh, background animations that are going on. They're very subtle, but very cool there and very filmographic because this is a film festival after all. So this was really cool. This one might be my favorite though. This is super punk rock. Look at how weird this one is. 
is we go through this. I love the colors. It's really in your face. And it has this surprise element. The location is redacted until you scroll over it. So it's not only giving us a design idea, it's giving us actually marketing ideas inside of these designs. Now the next step is to get your wild creations out into the world. And the quickest and easiest way to do that is with this deploy app button here at the top of uh, AI Studio. But if you want to take a more professional route and you want to build out an app, you can download this to GitHub and then deploy it into a, a real hosting service. I've got a ton more in this cheat sheet, but really that glossary of terms is something that I'm gonna be coming back to over and over again as I seek to get better and better control of my AI design. So if that's something that's interesting to you, go ahead and check that out in the description. And I also have different levels of group coaching in there. If, if you wanna go deeper and get on some calls with me, check those out. But now that you've got a really professional design, Design on your hands, you probably want to deploy it in a really professional way. And that's what this video is all about. It walks through that and how to create basically any kind of software. I will see you over there next. Make the dreams come true.